there's one last operation I want to show you. Um, there's plenty of other uh, operations, um, but the image I want, the, the, the operation I want to show you uh, is another way to make an image. Okay, so one way to make an image, as you have seen, is to copy them from the internet. Uh, another way to make an image is to uh, start with some text. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, there's this operation called text. And what that does is it makes a piece of text as an image. Okay. The text operation takes three inputs. The first input is a string. What is a string? Well, um, it's basically, uh, for now, you know, the basic kind of strings, if you have a double quote and then some stuff like, uh, let's say, hello, and then another double quote, that's a string. Okay. So what I was going to say is that text is an operation that takes a string as its first input. Okay, um, that's not the only input it requires. Uh, the second input has to be like the size of the the text. So thirty is kind of a medium size. So so let's try thirty. Okay, so that's a second input. It has to be a number that to say how big the text should be. Okay. And finally, we need to specify the color of the text. It's also a string, really. Like if I said put double quote and then the color might be red, let's say, and not double quote, that's a good color, okay? But just to clarify that I really mean a color, I mean, uh, I'm gonna put color here, okay? But really a color is just a string, okay? A special kind of string because not all string, like hello is not a color, but red is a color, okay? So that's it. Um, this text operation actually returns an image as well. Okay. So now, uh, if you look, take a look at my uh, uh, definitions window, I have two formulas. The first formula is a text operation, and the second formula is a chain of place image and scale. Okay. So when I hit run, I should see two images. The first image is the result of text. That's this hello that you see, and then. The second is just the dog and cat that we built earlier. Okay. So now I could actually chain the text operation in. Right? Suppose I don't really care about dogs uh, and I just want to put the word hello as a piece of text on top of the cat image. I could do that now. What I need to do is let's uh, cut this formula for the text and Instead of the, uh, the dog, I'm going to paste in that text formula. Okay, so now I still have place image. It's still taking four inputs. The first input is still an image. It's just a different image. It's just a text image. And when I hit run, I get this piece of text showing hello. Okay. All right, so you can see that you could do plenty of things with images, and there are actually a lot more operations on images provided by this library that we required called to HTTP slash image. Okay, but let me uh, give you a, a tip about the definitions window uh, at this point that you might find useful. As you can see, um, the formulas are getting kind of big, especially when there are images involved. They're really getting kind of big. Okay. So it turns out that you don't have to put each formula on just one line. Okay, there's no reason we have to put all this on one line. Okay, you could actually break it into multiple lines, just like when you write a sentence on a piece of paper, you don't have to put it all on one line. You could actually break the line and keep writing the same sentence on the next line. Okay, so here, if I just go to a, a, a sort of a place that makes sense, um, where it's not too abrupt, and I just go there and I hit enter or return. What I've done, just like in a typical text editor or word processor, is to break the line. I now have two lines, okay? And maybe it makes sense to break the line again in front of the cat. So I'm gonna go to the cat and hit enter again, okay? So now um, my program is narrower. It's kind of easier to read, and I've divided the four inputs to place image onto three lines, which kind of makes sense because you know here's an image, here's x and y which go together, and here's uh, the the other image. Okay, one thing you can notice about the way Dr. Racket 
broke the line when I hit enter both times is that it put space to the left of the new lines. So the new lines are actually kind of indented. Okay. And that's really important when we chain lots of different operations uh, to see what is an input to what. Okay. The way the spacing works is that if you have multiple inputs to the same operation, like for example, here's one input, here's another, and here's another, okay? So we have multiple inputs to the same place image operation, and they, now we've decided to break the line to put them on three different lines, then the three lines have to start at the same horizontal place. They have to line up horizontally, right? So you can see that the, the left edge of this first input is the same as the left edge of the second input, is the same as this uh, left edge of the last input, okay? So when we maintain this formatting, it's so much easier to read the program and figure out what's going on. So please do this. Please make sure that when you break the line to make your program easier to read, you make them easy, even easier to read by lining up at the left edges of inputs to the same operation. Thanks.